up guys it's your girl matt cox here with ma couture crafting guess what i did oh my gosh whoop whoop i bought a sewing machine now it is not the brother luminaire xp2 that wasn't what we're doing we won't do that for a while but what i did get was the Janome hd9 Oh my gosh, I just, I can't even explain. It wasn't really something that I was, I knew that I would do it down the line. I knew that I wanted a, a semi-industrial machine, a professional machine that did a straight stitch. The reason why I wanted it was because when I was doing that buy any bag, I made it through, you guys saw it. We we did it together, but it was a wrestle. It was, it was, it was not the easiest thing to do on a domestic machine. I currently have the Quantum Stylus by Singer. I think that is an excellent beginning quilter machine. I have made over 20 quilts on that, that little guy, and I've done it in a short amount of time. I haven't had any issues. It's never been to the um, the soil vac store. It hasn't, it's never been. Nothing is broken, and I hit a needle really badly once where I broke the needle because I hit the needle and it flew off, but that was the worst thing that's ever happened, but it... It, it's been an excellent machine. It has wonderful, like a ton, a ton, a ton of stitches. It's nice. But this Janome HD9, it hits different. Um, and it's such a story to tell you guys. So I was debating. I went in the Facebook groups and I'm like, hey, this is what I'm thinking about doing. And I was getting everybody's opinions. And what kept coming up are the Jukies and the Janome. The Juki, the Janome. And I'm like, what is going on here? Jukies are super popular. People love the Jukies. Everybody and their mother sews on them. And what changed my mind, which had me... So I went to a store. I can't wait to tell you guys about that experience. But I went to the store and I looked at the Juki and I looked at the Janome. This is a store that has all the brands in there. And that makes a difference because they don't have a dog in the race. They're like, they're pretty much going to tell you what the better machine is. Of course, they did suggest the more expensive, which would be the Janome, but we'll get to all that price stuff later. It was between the Juki, I think it's the TL2010, and then they have a silver one that came out that's a limited edition that comes with all the feet. And feet are important because they're very expensive. I didn't realize how much feet cost for an industrial machine. And when I say expensive, we're talking like anywhere from 50 to 150 bucks for like a walking foot and upwards of that. So feet, if it comes with the feet, you're getting a good deal. But when I looked at the Janome, the HD9, it takes a large bobbin. I hate changing a bobbin. I don't know what it is about the makers of machines, which makes me think that the makers of machines don't actually quilt. Because if they did, they would know to make a bobbin that runs off of a spool. I've been told that there's one from way back in the day that actually does that, but it didn't stick. Why on earth are we still changing bobbins? I don't, I don't know. It bugs me. So the Janome taking an extra large jumbo bobbin made a difference for me because they're both sewing fast. They're both sewing, um, you know, they're, they're semi-industrial. They pretty much have the same throat space. They are, they're running neck and neck. But the Janome also can run a thicker thread. And I was like, there it is. Because I know that one of the reasons why I'm doing this is because I'm probably going to start making bags at some point. Like not just bags, but bags. And I like to piece. I want to piece from sun up to sundown. I am a piecer. And this right here changes the game. Changes the game completely because it goes so fast. You're talking about 1,500 stitches per minute like... It's just, it's different. So I talked to, I've got a couple of friends who are master quilters. And I, by friends, I mean people that I know that I stock, that I call. They, I don't know why these people gave me their phone numbers because I call them constantly and bug them. But when I was talking to them, they're like, just wait, you are going to see a difference. And I'm like, how much of a difference can I see? Let me tell you guys, if I'm being 100% honest, I didn't sew on the Juki and I didn't sew on the HD. I watched a couple of videos on YouTube and I was like, all right, cool. You know, they, they do this. I watched the woman sew on the HD9 in one store. And she put a couple of layers of fabric. And I figured if it can get under the needle, it's going to take it. And I think that they're probably both around the same when it comes to the, the horsepower. You know, how strong they are, what they can do. I think if you can get it under the needle, it's probably going to sew. Although I watched this man sew plastic, like 
thick plastic with the Janome. And I thought, well, that's that's lovely. This Janome also takes a different needle. It takes like a H an F H5 XL kind of needle or something like that. You guys will see the machine and me playing with the machine, basically an unboxing in a second. So let me let's talk about price. I didn't realize that buying a sewing machine is like buying a car. I am so glad that I shopped around. I'm not going to tell you guys the stores that I went to. I'm not going to tell you what they, they did. I thought I might, but I'm a new channel. I got five subscribers. How about I not tick off the whole world with my five subscribers at this point? So I'm not going to do that just because I couldn't figure out if that was the right thing to do or not. So I'm not going to talk about the exact price that I paid, but check this out. First store that I went to, which was suggested by one of the master quilters, went there, talked to the guy, and he's like, okay, um, the Juki, I think the Juki was, I don't know, maybe 1500 and the Janome was 18, like 1899 or something like that. And this is 1899 And I was like, okay. And I thought, well, I was going to run around the corner and go to one of my favorite quilt stores anyway. And so I got the information and I was like, all right, I'll, I'll think about it. I really wasn't planning on buying a machine necessarily. I was just kind of gathering information. So I went to the quilt store, I'm talking to them, and they're like, you know what, the customer service there is crap. And I was like, really? They were like, yeah. I was like, but they speak so highly of you. And they're like, yeah, we've got a relationship with them, but we've got another store, Sew and Vac store up the street. There are a ton of Sew and Vac stores everywhere. I had no idea how many sewing and vacuum stores were actually around. So I run up the street, I talk to these people, and granted, they were nicer. She located this particular machine for me, and she told me the price was $14.99. I was like, what? I'm like, oh, we're we're dropping by by big numbers. I said, oh, they're they're playing around here. So I, I went home and I, I didn't take the machine there because she didn't have it in the shop at that very second. Had they had it in the shop, I might have taken that deal. So I went ahead and went to I went home and I thought about it and I started the next day. I kind of looked around and I started calling different shops to kind of see what they what we were talking about. I called another shop and the woman said, 2,500. I said, what? She said, and that's what the train in. I'm like, oh no, <laughs> no, I was, I was getting stuff all over the board. I called another shop and the guy says, oh, I'll give it to you for 1,100. And I was like, all right, I'm on my way. I get a call back from that same guy like, oh, it was the wrong model number. Just kidding. Um, I think he said the price was whatever. I don't know. So what happened is I found a price that I was comfortable paying. A woman made me an offer and I was like, boy, that's nice. So then I called another store and said, hey, I'm just checking to see if you guys have it. And this guy says, hey, I want you to come buy it for me and goes lower. I said, huh, call the woman back. And I said, hey, this guy says he can go a little bit lower. And she says, uh, you know, blah, blah, blah. We're talking about it. And she says, how about I throw in you know, some feet and some extras. Ding, 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 ding. I was like, all right, cool. And so I ended up buying this machine. What really sold it for me were, were a few things. The gentleman who was haggling with this other woman didn't sound like he actually knew how to thread the machine, work the machine, or if he even sewed on the machines. And I thought, geez, I'd rather be with somebody who can support me and help me through this process. And that's what I've been told. I've been told that the support from the store is really important because I don't know what I'm doing. I mean, this is a no frills machine. It's a straight stitch. It's not doing any zigzags. It just is powerful and fast and it goes straight and it's strong and that's what it does. So there's not a lot of frills. But if I was buying a more frilly machine, the M7, we'll talk about that in a second, um, I would, it, the support is important. You want to go someplace where you feel comfortable, where they, they know your name, where they, they treat you like you just spent, you know, $1,000, which is a lot of money to a lot of people. Um, I did say M7. I saw it in person. That sucker is the Cadillac of sewing machines. If I didn't have my heart set on that other machine that I was just talking about due to the Disney features and the embroidery and all that other stuff, it would be the M7. That M7 is a bad mamma jamma. And something else that I noticed when I went on Juki's website, I was just kind of looking at who their influencers were and who their ambassadors are and all that kind of stuff. And I know we are in a crazy time and, you know, it, it's, it's crazy right now. Racial issues are serious business. 
And I don't always put that at the forefront, but I am starting to look to see who supports whom and who has who. I, I'm starting to just look. And Janome is the most diverse ambassadors that I, I'm like, who are these? Some of the coolest people, like the cool kids, they're with Janome. I'm just saying. I do not work for Janome. Janome does not know me from Adam. They could care less about my five, my five subscribers. I love you guys, but I don't know that they really care. Um... But that spoke volumes and the types of creators that they were were just like, they just aligned with me. I'm like, oh, they're dope. Like they're the cool kids. I want to be the, the cool kids too. So I really like to see the diversity. And when I say diversity, I mean diversity, a little bit of everybody. And that also helped me choose to go with Janome. I know that Latif is with Janome. Um, and I also know that they have her sewing on a beautiful M7 too. But <laughs> that sucker is different. All that to say, that's one of the things that led me to Janome. So that thick thread, the larger bobbin, and the diversity in their, their ambassadorship, that, that looks good for me. This woman also made me an offer I could not refuse, and it was cheaper than all the other numbers that I, I just told you guys about. And I bought it from D and H Sewing out in Orange. And because she was so nice, <laughs> and because she was such a good salesperson, I also ended up buying the Janome um, Air Thread Serger. It's still in the box. I don't even want to talk serger right now. I'm not sure I told my husband that I bought two machines that day, but I did. Um, I knew that I would want a serger at some point, and so that'll be a whole nother video once I get into my apparel, which I'm it just so enclosed does not call my name. I want a quilted coat. There's only one way for me to get the one that I want, and that's to make it. So at some point, I'll be doing that. But I, I've always kind of known that I kind of wanted a serger. So again, she made me an offer because it was National Serger Month. It still is. All sergers are on sale all across the world right now. So if you want a serger, now would be a great time to go. And so I got the top of the line, the Air Threader Janome Serger, in addition to the HD9 straight stitch sewing machine. Get there. She gives me a lesson on how it works. I told you guys I had never sewn on it before I bought it. Bought it. We opened it. She set it up. She she shows me how to thread it. And I was kind of intimidated because you can see all the threading things on the outside of the machine. I guess my machine does the same stuff, but you can't see it. So it's not so intimidating. And once I've done it a couple of times, I can thread the machine. Not a problem. But she says, sew on it. I don't take classes. I, it's, I don't want people watching me sew. It's just, I don't know. I'm self-taught. I'm sure I'm doing it all wrong. But she says, sew on it. We've got to, you know, we've got to do this. So I said, okay, this is a new machine, guys. This, <laughs> I'm sewing on a Singer Quantum Stylus before this, okay? So she takes the speed and she puts it on slow. Perfect. Let's do it. So I am being extremely careful, extremely cautious, and I love the pedal. It's a big, thick pedal. My pedal doesn't look like that. It's a little wimpy pedal. This is a big pedal. So I'm stepping on it very, very lightly. And I'm like, I feel comfortable. I'm controlling it. It's to do, to do, to do, to do. Perfect. No problem. This feels good. She's like, you getting the hang of it? Yes. And then I increase the speed a little bit. And then I, I, at some point, I think I pushed the pedal all the way down on the slowest speed. And I was like, whoa, we going for a ride. Whoa, wait a minute. She says, okay, let's see what it can do. She puts the speed as fast as it'll go. And she says, floor it. I said, okay. So put the, the fabric down and. It's ready to go, and I step on it, and shoo. that sewing machine pretty much took my whole life through it. Everything came out the chair. I'm a big girl. Everything is going, you guys. It was, I'm, I'm telling you guys, it, it just was unlike anything I had ever felt, or, or just, it was amazing. This machine almost pulled my whole life through the machine. It's serious business. I love it. It is going to do exactly what it is that I need it to do. So I, I've been home and I'm on this three yard fabric uh, quilt journey right now. So I'm turning out quilts like this right now. There's a goal that I'm trying to get to and I need to do about five quilts before I can get to the projects that I really want to do. That's a whole nother story. But let me just say, I have never in my life pieced something, never, and I've made 20 quilts in a year because, you know, guys, know I just started. So I've made a lot of quilts, but I have never 
made a piece that came out the size it was supposed to. If it said the block was supposed to finish at 12 and a half, my block finished at, I don't know, 11 and three. It just, it's never been right. I have never sewn accurately. I just assume that it can't be done or master quilters are the only people who can do that. I kid you not. When you guys see me sew on this machine, you will see that the fabric is sewn perfectly at a scant quarter because it's not a true quarter. It's not. And now I understand what they talk about when they say scant quarter, because that makes a difference with the fold. I get it now. And you, you look at the fabric on one side and you flip it over and you can't see any of the fabric on the back. If you've ever sewn anything, you know what I'm talking about. Sometimes you'll see the fabric from the back slip up a little bit. I'm not having it. Not at all. This has increased my accuracy. It's increased my confidence. Janome, this HD9, I am here for it. I support it. Um, you're like, but you just got it. Yeah, I just got it. But I also just made three or four quilts and I kid you not that's been in like a week I'm, I'm a beast with it. Like so trust me like trust me. I sew Hardcore all the time a lot and this machine oh My you guys my blocks. I almost wanted to cry because now it means that I can Participate <clears throat> not crying. I swear but now I can participate in like my guild stuff Like I would always be embarrassed like dang they need a 12 inch block like I can't sew a 12 inch block not without putting a border on it and cutting it down to 12 inches like I just never felt comfortable to show my sewing or anything like that my quilts come out you know we're on this journey together you guys see the, the stuff it happens but this has just increased I look so professional I looked at the back of my quilt and was like that's what I'm talking about and it is 100% do nothing changed from the quantum stylus the day before to the HD9 except for the machine. It's not that I, I mean, I've done, I've learned a lot. I've, I've definitely learned a lot, but I don't feel like from one day to the next, it was me just all of a sudden being able to sew a quarter inch. That ain't it. This is this machine. It increased my accuracy tenfold. I am telling you this machine. I'm about that life. Janome again does not know me from Adam. They don't care <laughs> at all. And I'm telling you guys the truth. You guys know that you guys have been on this journey with me. You saw when I bought my singer, I showed my very first sewing. Um, I've shown you guys the quilts that I've made. Watch these quilts now. I'm going to start showing you guys the back of my quilts just because I'm so confident at how precise the things are coming out. My half square triangles, all of a sudden, they're not getting eaten up the <laughs> way that they used to. My, my flying geese don't have those wounded, no wounded ducks, you know? It's, it's just, it makes a difference. And I didn't think that it would. And I always preach, you buy the best that your money can afford. So that way, you know, it's you if something is screwing up. It was me. You know, I bought the best that I could do at the time. That singer made sense. But now I want to play with the big kids because quilting is just, it's, it's a part of me. I love it. I'm never going to stop quilting. Um, not that I can see <laughs> anytime soon. So this was a great investment. And at the end of the day, it wasn't super duper duper expensive like the other machine that I want is. Although that M7, it doesn't have embroidery on it, but it does everything else. And it's a beast. I saw it in action, guys. It That's a magnificent machine. It makes me kind of contemplate buying one. And the store where I bought my HD9 made me, excuse me, made me an, an amazing they made me an amazing offer. Um, so, yeah, I'm thinking about it. We'll see. We'll, we'll see if an M7 just all of a sudden shows up. Because it's not the most expensive machine that I've ever seen. It's actually quite nice. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching this intro. If you'd like to see what the actual unboxing looks like, I'll definitely put the timestamp down here so you don't have to listen to all this craziness. Um, but... I support the purchase of this machine. It has made all the difference. It's strong. What's really going to be the test is after I finish with these three yard quilts, I'll start on my bags. There's a couple of companies that I want to compare and a couple of patterns that I want to compare. So bags are coming in the near future. And I think, I think this machine is going to handle it like nothing else. The just strength that you can feel and how fast I piece. And I can't wait to do some strip piecing like I'm looking forward to it. So again, guys, thank you so much. If you haven't done so already, please like, comment, and subscribe. And I will continue to tell you guys about this machine, what it looks like, what this journey looks like with this machine. Um, but at this point, I've had it for about a week, and it's it's a beast. I love it. I've named her Io. <laughs> Let me know if you know where that comes from. <laughs> All right, guys, I'll talk with you guys later. Bye-bye.
Okay, so I'm about to attempt to wind a bobbin for the first time. Let's see if I can do it. Bobbin winding instructions. Inserting a bobbin, winding a bobbin. I need some thread. I'm going to try to wind from this guy here. Let's see. So there is a long telescoping bar right here. And it, you pull it up and then you twist it to the right and it actually clicks and it stops. So I'm going to grab the thread and pull it through the first hoop that is up here. See the hoop? It's way up yonder. That hoop. And then, let's see. Okay, it feels like it should go in this hook here. And it does go in that hook. And then it's going to go around this screw here. I felt it like go under there. And then we're going to take it through Mr. Bobbin. There should be a hole of some sort here. We'll pull it through. If I can get it in there. Come on. Behave. Got it. We're going to put it there. And then do I move this here? Does that thing move? I move that that way. Did I do that right? So I put that through there. Move this here. Now let's see what happens when I turn on the machine. Because it is not on. Just hit that with my face. That was great. Okay. And we're going to hold this really tight. And it goes down and back up again. And then I'm going to cut this guy with my handy dandy scissors that are not where they always are. Where those scissors go? Where are my... Hmm. It's going to be one of those kind of days. And now we're going to let it go and see if it does it cool thing about this machine is that it is supposed to be able to wind a bobbin while I'm sewing. So we're going to see how this sucker, and that's a jumbo bobbin, and it'll let me know. Okay. That didn't take but what, a few seconds? So I'm going to clip this guy. Probably should have clipped that longer, but you get what you get. And this is a bobbin wound. I wonder if there's a lot on there. I mean, it's a bigger bobbin for sure. Now I've got to figure out how to put this sucker in the machine. But Okay, so this is a crazy angle, but let's see if it works. Now I have to figure out how to insert the bobbin. So I'm going to lift this guy up. It sprung open. And we're going to pull this guy down. And I know there's a little lever here that you open and pull it right out. Okay. Nice. There is currently a bobbin in here that the woman from when I bought it, she was showing me how to do it. And this guy should just come right out. oil on my fingers oh oh that it's a machine brand new just oily don't love it don't love the smell but 
That is not a full bobbin. I was getting ready to put the exact same bobbin right back in. Leave it to me. Okay, so it's supposed to be going off the spool this direction toward it. And then we'll put this guy in here. And does it fit? <laughs> does not seem to want to fit. Did she give me wrong bobbin size? They are not the same size. Of course, I just opened all these bobbins and these are not the proper size bobbins. Not for this guy. Okay, first issue. Okay, so hopefully I have wound the proper bobbin and it should be coming off the spool this way. I'm gonna turn this and put this in this way. Fits right in. We're gonna take this thread and pull it through this guy. Okay. And then it's gotta go down and under this guy. And then out through this little hole here. So it went through that little thing and down and through that. Okay. And now I need to take this guy and make sure that it is facing, I guess, this way. We are going to open this. and hopefully just slide it right in there. Huh. Feels right, I have no idea if it is right. And then just leave that thread hanging to the side. That feels wrong, but just because this is my first time doing it and I don't know nothing about this. Close the cover, put the plate back in. That feels scary. Okay, and now what do I do? How do I draw up the the um draw up the bobbin thread? Oh, probably need to thread the machine. All right, that's a whole nother ball of wax. Now let's thread the machine. All right, so I am looking at the instructions for threading the needle for medium and lightweight fabric. And from my understanding, after I've read this already, you don't have to use so much of this stuff here when you're doing it for medium and lightweight. So, okay, let's see what, how I'm gonna do this. When I was at Quilt something, Road to California, I bought a cone, but I didn't have a way to use a cone until now. So let's go on ahead and put the cone on the machine. And it's just, it says Essential Pro White. I want to say this is from Connecting Threads. It is Connecting Threads. Huh, this is a polyester. Good to know. Size 70 slash 3. have no idea what that means. I don't know. I'm just going to assume and hope that this all works. And I'm not tearing up my beautiful machine before I even get it good. With my little stinky, oily machine smelling hands. Ugh, okay. All right, I'm gonna take this cone, and I think there's a cone holder kind of thingy in here. Yes. There's this cone holder thingy. I'm sure it has a better name than thingy, but uh, it's gonna go there. I'm gonna take the thread out. This is the thread that she used when she sold me my machine to show me how to thread it. I'm going to take this thread out just, you know, so I'm not confusing myself that I used for winding the bobbins, the two bobbins, one of which I cannot use because they are just too big. So we'll take that down. We'll take this and we'll put this on the machine. 
Is that on there right? All right, I guess it doesn't jiggle so much. Did I put that on there right? Is that on the right side up? Let's just assume that it is. Okay, so it appears that the spool holder was put on right. And then I'm just gonna put this net over it because apparently when you use a cone, sometimes the thread will wanna fall. And this keeps it from wanting to do that. So I'm just gonna, I guess I'll try to show you guys. Oh, I know this is bad. Okay, put this little guy like a little Spanx for you, your thread. <laughs> Spanx for your thread. I'm tickled. And I'll, oh, that's not, mm -mm, just a fail. Let's pull the thread through first, then put the Spanx on. Okay. All right, now we can get into business here. Oops, I don't know if it's supposed to go through that thing. So, first thing goes through here. Oh, lost the thread just that quick. Okay. So, it's going to come in here. And then it's going to go straight to here. So, this machine, again, like I said, was already threaded. So we are just going to put this down a little bit. Okay. So we'll just kind of follow what has already happened here. What is going on there? Okay. Um, where did it go? Do, 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 do. lost my page medium okay so we're gonna go down through here actually I'm gonna come around this way and go through this guy and then bring it back down through this, this second hole here. I'm just scared to take this out, but obviously it's that time. Like I need to take this out so that I can just be great. Don't be scared. Move with courage. Okay. All right. It's usually very quiet. And all of a sudden when I'm recording, this is why I only do voiceovers because can you guys hear all that craziness all right so it does that then we're gonna go around the left of this then we are going to go down through here we're gonna go up around that through this little spring thingy here there's a little little black thing there we're gonna go under this guy here up behind this this guy we're gonna go uh oh and I have to go through him this is at the highest point probably should have trimmed this thread before I tried to be great here we're gonna go back down through here okay then we're gonna go in front of this And get it in there oh I see why okay got it in there and then we're gonna go in front or around this thing if I had my nails which I usually do there's a very strong chance that I would not be able to do this properly well maybe not the first time around okay now it's time for that automatic thread looper thing to happen I gotta think on it for a moment. Okay, so it's saying push this down and to the left. Down to the left. Down to the left. 
Okay, we are going to turn the machine on for a moment. I like how I just think that I know this machine well enough to just hit it. Okay, and we're going to hit this button. Up. Okay, to make sure that it's, it's at its highest point. Now I'm going to turn the machine back off before I hurt myself with this extremely powerful machine. And I'm going to do this. And I'm supposed to be able to rotate this guy. Oh, probably this way, not the other way. How about that? Yep, that's the issue. About to break the machine. So I push it down, push it back. Then we are going to put this on the left-hand side of this needle and try to hold it kind of... Oh, I feel like that's wrong. I feel like this needs to go in front of it. Yep. <laughs> Lots happening over here. Okay, go in front of this guy and hold it and then pull this and ha, voila, that happened. Okay, now we are going to hold this taut, turn the machine back on and hope and pray that I can pull this bobbin up. Okay, I've got this, I'm holding it. We're going to hit this button. Ha ha. And it appears that we pulled it. Woo -woo. I'm going to push that to the back. I'm going to push that to the back. And then I'm going to go grab some, some scrap fabric. Okay. So I went and cut some scrap pieces of fabric real quick. And I can see that this has a quarter inch mark right there. I wonder if I sew where the end of this foot is, what will happen? I don't know. Let's try the quarter inch mark. Okay, I'm reaching behind the machine to drop the presser foot. It has a bar capability, but I don't have that on here since I often stand and move around. So there's this little hole here for the knee lever. I might play with it in a minute. We'll see. So I have the machine set at the very slowest speed because I tried it in a store and it's definitely different and powerful. So let's see what happens if I hit it just a little bit. Let's see what happens. Okay. I have it set at a three stitch length right now. It Am I sewing? Let's see. Okay. I didn't have it stop in the needle down position, which I don't love, love, but whatever. Ooh, that sounded like that would have hurt something. So I hit the automatic thread cutter, lift it. Nice tension here. Let's see if I can't get it better. And then I'll flip it over. Oh, yeah. Tension looks good to me. Nice. Cut it for me. Pulled it through the back. Perfect. Let's see what happens when we try to backstitch. We will go nice and slow. And let's try to... Oh, I'm going to have to get used to that. The minute that I drop my foot... I should have put the needle, anyway, let's just hold this down and see what happens. It's back stitching. I lift it up. It's pulling it forward. Okay, and then we will cut this. My other machine always stopped in the needle, in the needle down. So here we are with that. Let's sew four layers together so I just folded this in half and we'll pull that to the back and we will drop the presser foot and we're gonna push this button where the needle starts down and it will end down and let's back stitch just because we should practice lift it up Okay, and let's cut this. That cut is just sounds vicious. 
Oh, and it, I wasn't even thinking that I was sewing through four. I didn't even, didn't even bat an eye. It just, no issues. Let's fold it again and see what happens. Um, let's make the needle is going to go down. It's going to stop down, which makes me happy. Oh, it's not even, it's not even thinking about sewing through all these layers. Like, not even a little bit. Let's backstitch. Let's go for it again. Let's hit the scary button. Actually, we can go through. Oh, the scary button, man. I'm telling you. It's not even, it's no issue. It feels a little tighter, but I haven't adjusted my tension or anything, and it's sewing like butter. Nobody told me to try this. Now, see, if I tear up my machine, it's going to be my own darn fault, but I just don't think it will. I feel like if it can get underneath this needle, it's going gonna, it's gonna to do its thing. Let's see if it'll reverse. It will. Let's see if it'll go back forward. Let's cut these threads. See what we got. Oh yeah, went through again. No issues. <laughs> no issues. No issues. You can kind of see where these feed dogs are letting the fabric have it just a little bit. Can you guys see that? Let's see if I... The feed dogs are kind of leaving a mark of indentation, but that could be, I would just need to change the amount of pressure that is going on there, but I'm not getting ready to touch anything because it'll be just my luck. I start touching stuff and can't fix it. Not a hundred percent sure when I'll be going through, I don't know how many layers of fabric this is, but probably not anytime soon. When I start making bags, we'll cross, we'll cross that bridge. So this is, this is my new girl. I am naming her Ayo. I'm going to put a vinyl sticker on here somewhere. Maybe right here. It'll say Ayo. We shall see. Thanks for hanging out with me. Okay. I feel like I should show you me really testing the speed of this machine. Um, I just tried it a second ago and it became un threaded so I had to re-thread it but not all the way just right here it came out and I'm like okay I think I can work with that so I'm gonna put it at full speed which is psycho probably no reason in the world to ever sew that fast but might as well show you what this this machine can do so yeah um I'm gonna do this actually let's let's make it slow let's drop this presser foot let's drop this needle Let's sew a little bit and then back stitch. Now we're going to move the speed up to full power and we're going to let her go. What it is now I'm sewing all kinds of extra crooked, but you get what you get. You don't throw a fit when you're going that fast. Now let's see. And it just sewed. It just sewed. No issues. <laughs> I need to learn how to sew straight on this machine. I need to learn where the quarter inch is and all that stuff. I need to pull out my handy dandy ideal seam guide gauge and figure out if that's really a is that really a quarter inch right there where they say it is. Uh, yeah, based on these two machines, it looks like it is. Hmm. Maybe I should put the guide down. So I have this guide, this metal guide, but I feel funny about putting this metal magnet with, ooh, it's an all metal machine. Feels very different than the one on my, no, I don't like that touching that. It's like touching the foot just a touch. There we go. Let's see if I put this down. Is that a quarter inch? It's close. It's very, very, very close. 
let's see what happens if we try to drive it now see if I can sew straight I just don't think I need to ever have it at this speed so let's just bring that down before I hurt myself and lose a finger on camera let's try this let's backstitch all right let's I do not think that is a quarter inch at all. I think I've been waving all around. It's better, but it is not a perfect quarter inch seam. It's better with the with the seam guide there. Much better. But can you see it? There's the camera. Let's do this. There we go. It's better. And I'm still drunk driving a little bit. <laughs> oh, I'm excited about this. Well, I'm about to start my new quote. I will see you guys on the next one. I keep saying bye and then I keep jumping back on because I keep wanting to try other things. And like I said, I'm taking you on this journey with me. So this is a guard that comes with the machine. And what happens if you use what comes with the machine as opposed to using your own magnets and things? Maybe you will get some success. So I'm going to put this here on the quarter inch part here. I'm going to tighten this guy up. And let's tighten it up here. If I was smart, I would turn the machine off before I hurt something and put this here and put it on the one quarter and then make sure that this is straight up against that and it looks like it is and now tighten okay that feels right let's take this out turn my machine back on Make sure this is, I'm going to hit that button in just a second to make sure that it stops in the needle down position. They gave me this little box and it's cute, but I want a better sewing box. And I want to put, I'm naming the machine Ayo, right? You guys know from the Dora Milaje. <laughs> and I want to put Ayo's weapons because she's a warrior. Um, because that's just the kind of humor that I have. Oh. That's slightly less than a quarter. Oh, I want it just a little bit further. Shoot. Okay, I'm releasing it. We're going to go up a little bit further. And you guys can't see what I can see, but there's a quarter inch here. Let's try it one more time. Okay, I feel much better about where that is. It feels like it's where it is supposed to be. I'm going to take these threads and... Try to pull it to the back and I'm going to cut another piece of fabric and this is actually straight. This fabric is straight fabric. Let's see if your girl can get a quarter inch now or closer to a quarter inch. And mind you, I'm sitting strange because I'm recording and it, I'm not sitting exactly straight the way that I should be. If you want to sew straight, sit straight. Imagine that. All right, let's go. I hate that I didn't put the down, needle down function. There we go. I am not sewing anything. How come you guys didn't tell me? I need to figure out what's going on, why this is probably because I'm not locking my stitch I'm not sure let's see one thing I do like is with my other machine I would have to pull up this plate right here before I could take out the bobbin and I'd have to remove my guard and all that but here it's just gonna stay so let's see if it is just not sewing because I'm not locking my stitch or what let's see Again, this is my very first time setting up the machine at home. 
and you guys are just kind of coming along the journey with me. So let's sew a little bit. Let's put the needle down first. Let's sew. Let's sew two stitches. Let's back two stitches. Now let's let her go. I'm gonna put her at medium speed. And let's see. Straighten out my fabric a bit. Let's put Jeez. Nobody should ever sew that fast. Alright. Let's see what we got. It looks pretty good. Give me a second here. Looks pretty good. I'll take it. That can get a quilt done for sure. I can get a quilt done like this for sure. All right, let's make a quilt. Okay, let's make this official. I cut this out on my Cricut and we are going to name this baby. Hopefully this peels up the way, yes, it releases. Cause you know, release paper can be funky and it's trying to be funky right now. <clears throat> Just do a little burnishing. We're gonna have to burnish better than that. There we go. We'll burnish a little bit more so we can name this baby. All right, let's see how we are going to put her on. I feel good about that placement there. <laughs> oh, I'm tickled. She is officially named. And this is just a permanent um, black vinyl. I did the glossy one because she's cute, but she attracts the dust. So let's see here. Yeah, she's on there. Whoop, whoop. So excited. 